California. Yeah, it's pizza. Yum, Costco. <laughs> Shameless plug. <laughs> you know, sometimes in Christianity, there's this tendency to try to be something you're not. You know, sometimes it's trying to be good. Sometimes it's trying to be, you know, like the Joneses or like the Jasons or, you know, like the whosoevers or whatevers, wherevers, however, you know, trying to fit in, you know, be one of the crowd. Now, I remember when I was younger, I was still trying to figure out who I was. You know, one week I'd want to be a cowboy. So I'd put on cowboy boots and try to wear blue jeans. <laughs> Man, I never wore blue jeans when I was in Norco. <laughs> and it was a cowboy town. They wore Levi's, but they were Nuvos, you know, those kind of, almost like polyester pants, but not polyester. But I never wore Levi's. <laughs> Wouldn't be caught dead in them. I was a hippie. But, you know, trying to figure out who I was and one minute a cowboy and I'd try on cowboy boots and blue jeans and didn't like it. And next minute I'd put on my mother's blouse and try to be a hippie, you know. Didn't like it and, you know, I keep trying different things, you know, sometimes even wearing clothes just to protest against, you know, who I wasn't, you know. Because I couldn't figure out who I was. Kind of like the way guys wear pants, you know, too low for their britches showing off their shorts. Because they haven't a clue who they are. They're still trying to figure it out. You can always tell somebody who doesn't know what they're doing because they always show what they don't know that they're doing. <laughs> you know, like the Emperor's New Clothes. Some guy wearing his pants too low doesn't realize he ain't going to get hired. <laughs> Nowhere. <laughs> Nobody's going to hire that sucker. <laughs> and he knows it. But you see, a lot of times people are spending so much time trying to figure out who they are They don't accept who they are. Then, after they figure out who they are, they try to figure out in their 20s who they're not. Because they're always trying to be something that they're not. Trying to achieve or get this goal or get that goal. And they figure once I get there, then I'll know who I am and what I am. You know, get the career, get the job, you know, get the house, get the kids, you know. You kind of get it all going, then suddenly the economy crash or corporation gets bought out or business goes under and, you know, that person you thought you were in high school that you went into being a young person and you thought you could do everything, suddenly you wake up one day and you go, look in the mirror and your woman maybe went, had some kids, you know, when you were young and you looked in the mirror and said, who am I? What have I become? You know, the guy became the corporation person he didn't like, and the woman, she's got all this, you know, fancy makeup and done all this, you know, surgery, and then she wakes up and she can't figure out who she is, but she knows that she doesn't like what she did, so she wants to figure out how to get back to what she was because she can't be who she is today. You know, God just loves you the way you are. You know, pizza in the morning. For me, today, pizza at noon, <laughs> maybe pizza at night. <laughs> but God kind of likes you being real. Because you see, He already knows who you're going to become. He already knows what you were. And He knows right where you are. So it's a whole lot easier if you just go ahead and went, you know, Lord, this is who I am. Just as I am, without one plea, but that your cross was shed for me or your blood was shed for me. Some song like that, I don't know. But the more that you accept who you are, 
from God's perspective, the more that you can take God's perspective about you, because he loves you, and run with it. You can be anybody, anything, anytime, anywhere, anyplace. Paul had an interesting statement. He said, uh, kind of that, when you're sharing the gospel, they become all things to all men, lest by any means some might be saved. So he actually kind of became different things to different people. You know, to the Jew, he was a Jew. Very much so. You know, Pharisee of Pharisees. You know, kosher in the extreme. Don't eat that, don't eat this, don't eat this, do that. But then, lo and behold, he gets with Gentiles and man, he'll eat pork. <laughs> that Paul was a porker. <laughs> He'd eat pizza. Matter of fact, I bet when he got a hold of bacon, he said, so that's what I've been missing out. <laughs> you Gentiles, man, you've been eating really good. <laughs> but he would do anything for the sake of Jesus because Jesus had already told him, basically, all the things that you have to suffer for the gospel's sake. Now, I don't know if you ever asked the Lord what you were going to go through, or you ever figured out that there's more to Christianity than sucking your thumb, or that this walk with God is more than just talk, you know, it's kind of a walk with God because God is walking with you. But, the more you learn to walk with him, and talk with him, the less phony you become. You know, it's easy to fake it, you know, and try to you know, put on the best suit and the best shirt and tie and head for church and act like, you know, you're a mile high you know, in the sky. But when you come crashing down on Monday or Tuesday, when you finally get the world interrupting you, Kind of like that, backups. Just hate that thing. Every day I hear it. You know, kind of puts you in your place, you know, and says, Who are you? You know. And, you know, we really don't want to find ourselves someday in front of Jesus when Him saying to you, Who are you? Because you've been faking it all along. You've been making it, pretending to be a Christian when you're really not. Because you know, you already know. You know whether you are or not. You know, you, you talk to God, you know, and you had a relationship, you know, and maybe you backslid and you haven't really gotten right with him, you know, and you kind of been he, he, he in and hawing, you know, kind of pushing it off and kind of sidestepping it and not wanting to deal with it. Why? I mean, now is the day of salvation. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart, as it says in the provocation, because, you see, God is already taken care of everything you need to be forgiven. He's taking care of everything you need to be changed and redeemed and made into a new person to move forward. He knows you're going to screw up. He knows you're going to fail. He knows you're going to stumble, fumble, bumble, you know, and kind of, you know, kind of lose the ball at times, you know, and then pick it back up and run for a touchdown. But the only way you're going to find out the final score is if you go all the way through the game, you know. So you really got to put yourself back off of the sidelines and back into the game. You got to get up, put on your helmet, head back out because the team's waiting for you. You know? I don't know who you thought you were, but if you're like the rest of us, you're just a sinner. <laughs> you're nobody special. You're everything special to God, but for the rest of us, you're just one of the team, you know? We're all sinners saved by grace. So, you know, kind of chill out, you know? Don't, don't get yourself too puffed up, you know, too high and mighty that you think that you're also man of God or woman of God that, you know, when you do crash and burn, that, you know, you don't feel like, oh, God, I can't do that ever again. Sure you can. Matter of fact, the best thing in the world you could do is to just step right up, admit that you sinned or blew it, and move right in and go right on. Because you'll just say, hey, you know, yes, I did it. I was one of those, you know, that used to think that I was righteous and then God busted me, you know, and now that I've been put back into my place, you know, I'm just a sinner saved by grace like you. And you do that. And you know what? People will like you more for that.
than they would have liked you, all those ones you thought you had that didn't really like you because they thought you were perfect. You're not. <laughs> That's the one thing you figure out when you get it from God's perspective. You're not perfect. Wow. And it's such a relief, you know, because then you can kind of... Mm, pick up your pizza in the morning. Eat it. Not worry about what anybody says. Because you can enjoy it. Because it's what God has provided for you. So whenever you get kind of bummed out, blown out, and can't figure out who you are, talk to God. He knows. He said, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God who prayed not to give to all men liberally. Go straight to Him first. Say, you know, Lord, I really think I'm special. <laughs> and let Him straighten you out. Because He'll tell you you're special, all right. Maybe not quite in the way that you think, but He'll tell you that He died for you and He loves you. He might also tell you what kind of sinner you are. I am black but comely. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Thy renown went forth among the heathen for thy beauty, for it was perfect through my comeliness which I had put upon thee, saith the Lord God. I am a sinful man, O Lord. Behold, thou art fair, my love. Behold, thou art fair. I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. Thou art all fair, my love. There is no spot in thee. When I would do good, evil is present with me. Be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. You are complete in him, perfect in Christ Jesus. You are washed, you are sanctified. You are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. That you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You know, think about that, really. Here you are worried about what you were, then becoming what you are, and then figuring out what you're not before you can finally get to where you accept who you are, which really is not anything too special. But then you also realize that what God has done, because it says that he showed forth that he justified you in the name of the Lord Jesus. You see, that's the part that most people forget. You're justified. So am I. <laughs> Kind of shocking, isn't it? Pizza eating, loving, kind of like person in the morning. Justified. I kind of like that. Because you see, my sunrise just disappeared and the clouds are coming. So whenever storms of life start to hit me, I like to remind myself, hey, I'm justified. <laughs> hey, yeah, you mean me. Yes, me. I am justified in the name of the Lord Jesus, but I'm still justified. But it really wasn't about anything I could do for myself. But it really was about what he did for me. So because I'm justified, I kind of realize just who I am. Just what I am. Just... how I am. <laughs> Maybe you do too. Maybe I'll make it a little easier for you to talk to God today. But you know what? He may need to remind you after he tells you who you are and where you come from, what he's done for you because of where you came from. Sinner. <laughs> Saved by grace. Yeah. 